I am also delighted to be speaking here because the Huffington Post was born seven years ago based on engagement. From the beginning, what I wanted to do was to bring together conversations that were happening offline but would not take place online until we made it easier for them. So the first person I invited to blog was uh, Arthur Schlesinger, a great historian, who then would fax me his blogs. Can you believe that? No MT. He barely had a laptop. And so whenever something important would happen historically, he would fax it to me, and that would mean he could be part of the conversation. And my point is it doesn't matter how you get it online, whether it's by faxing or by carrier pigeon or by dictating it to one of our editors who take dictation, we want your voices online. And so from the beginning, the Huffington Post, as well as being a journalistic enterprise with reporters and editors more and more as we became profitable, it's always been a distribution platform. And that for me is in a way even more exciting because there are millions of incredible conversations happening around the world, and we want to capture them. We don't care about exclusivity. We want to be able to cross-post your thoughts so that we can be a starter site where all these conversations can be taking place. And the place where each brand, whether a media brand or a product brand stands, is its DNA. For us, the first thing about our DNA is telling our users, our readers, the untold stories of our time. For example, the, the fate of the middle class, the fate of the unemployed. We have the data, we all know the numbers, but what is the story behind the numbers? And that's true for all our customers too. As we're collecting the data of our digital selves, what is behind these digital selves? What is it that people really care about? This is really what we want to do, that storytelling element. And as a result, we do it both in quick spurts and in long-form journalism. And the, the series of stories that won a Pulitzer for the Huffington Post uh, called Beyond the Battlefield was a 10-part series about returning vets, their stories. But even though our reporters spent eight months writing these different stories, at the end of each story, there is an invitation to our community to tell us their stories. And to tell us their stories in every medium, video as well as text. And then there was another article at the end of each of these reported stories about what people can do to help these vets. So it's not just receiving news, but how do you actualize the information to make a difference? So that's DNA number one. DNA number two is when it comes to how people live their lives. Our commitment is to helping our readers lead the lives they want, not the lives they settle for. By which we mean seeing what is it that they really want? What is it beyond the obvious thing and how can we help them achieve it? And the third thing is to be able to make a difference because increasingly, People want their lives to be about something more than just themselves. And that brings me to this um, really untranslatable German word, Zeitgeist. I really believe there is such a thing as a, a Zeitgeist, a spirit of the times. And as a media company, as a brand, the more we can tap into it, the more successful we're going to be. <coughs> Wayne Gretzky for the sports fanatic said it best when he said, skate where the pack is going, not where the pack has been. It's not about just being where everybody is. It's looking ahead at where everything is going and getting there first. And at the Huffington Post, the thing that's really important for us is to keep innovating all the time. No brand can stand, can stand still anymore. You cannot rest on your laurels. You're going to be overtaken. It's about constant iteration and constant innovation. When people now don't want to just passively consume. They want to be engaged. They want to share what they love. They want to participate in the story of our times in big ways or small. 
Will I am put it best when he said we used to consume news sitting on a couch. Now we consume news galloping on a horse. We don't just consume it, we pass it on, we share, we add to it. That's really how dramatically different the world we're living in is. And that's what is also the new thing happening right now, which is as we're looking at the ways in which our digital selves are connecting with our real selves, something new is happening, which is we are moving from relevance to resonance. Now stay with me, because I just came into this insight yesterday, and I was at this lunch before the Dalai Lama received the Templeton Prize at St. Paul's Cathedral. And in this beautiful crypt in St. Paul's Cathedral, I was sitting next to the canon of St. Paul's, and he said to me that people are hungry to not just receive relevant information, which is what marketers have often focused on, you know, what's the relevant data, what's the relevant signals that your digital selves are leaving everywhere, to something that also resonates, that has an emotional connection. That's the thing you're going to share. That's really the ultimate for brands and marketers, but also for the human experience. So there is a St. Paul's canon giving you a digital insight that you can use in your marketing. In fact, I think it's often in age-old wisdom that we find the biggest, the biggest insights into our modern world. And that's why I think if you look at the future, we are going to be really living in a hybrid universe in which ideally we combine the best of the all, in the case of journalism, long form writing, beautiful style, great design, fact checking, fairness, really reverence for facts. Because we all have the right to our own opinions but not to our own set of facts. <coughs> and at the same time, embracing all the new technologies, embracing all that the social tools allow us to do, while at the same time learning to disconnect from them in order to reconnect with ourselves and our own wisdom, and then connect with them again after we have unplugged and recharged. 